eating and raising us. And you can celebrate yourselves. Celebrate someone beside you. Ask the person, are you excited tonight? What's the person saying? Now compliment somebody. Compliment something on the person. You're looking great. You're looking nice. Hallelujah. And you may please be seated. Mandi brandi kastikabaya. Hallelujah. Are you ready for God's word tonight? Are you sure you're ready for God's word tonight? Ask the person beside you, are you ready? What's the person's response? Hallelujah. You know, God's word is the test of how mature a believer is. You can know how mature a believer is by how they receive God's word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And thank God we are on the series Bread and Stones. Somebody say Bread and Stones. Hallelujah. So it is intentionally teaching us to place value on God's word. Hallelujah. Are we together? It is intentionally placing, um, teaching us to place value on the word of God. On the word of God. Hallelujah. I want us to celebrate all our centers connected um, all over the globe. Can we celebrate them? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. Matthew chapter 4 and from verse 4. Hallelujah. We have our Bibles there, right? Before the screen comes up. If you are there, shout Amen. All right, if you are not there, say wait for me. Are you with your Bibles? Many of you are not with your Bibles. Oh, we are used to the screen, right? And projection. All right, if you are with your Bibles, share with somebody. Um, then we'll read together. One to go from verse 1 to verse 4. All right, one to go, let's go. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Verse 2, one to go. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and on guard. All right, it means he was hungry. That's King James. Now, verse 3 says what? And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said what? One more time. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Let's read that last verse once again. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Now let's try this in the message translation. Matthew 4. And um, verse 4. How many of us have the message translation? Are you there? If you are there, shout amen. amen. Oh, beautiful. All right, let's go. One to go. Next, Jesus was taken into the world by the Spirit for the test. The devil was ready to give it. Jesus prepared for the test by fasting 40 days and 40 nights, then left him, of course in a state of extreme hunger which the devil took advantage of in the first test he says what since you are god's son speak the word that will turn these stones into loaves of bread hallelujah now you see that first of all we would have imagined that who was supposed to lead you know, the Bible says, lead us not into temptation, right? It means it is possible to be led into temptation. Not by the devil, but by who? The Spirit of God. Are we together? Hello, are we together? It means God himself can orchestrate a test for a believer. So it is not everything you are going through that God is unaware of. Sometimes you have trials, you have tribulations. There are difficult moments that it is God himself 
that puts you there. Are you getting what I'm saying? Sometimes you are praying and saying, God, why? God, why am I here? You did nothing wrong. Hallelujah. We see the case of Job. How that God himself used Job to brag. And said, I know him. And that became the beginning of what? Because a man was righteous. Because a man was serving God the way he should. Because a man had faith in God. And God said, the proof, the way I will repay you for this, is to put you through trials. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? No, you will think that God is a loving God. That the moment you are serving him, the moment you are getting things right, or you are coming to church, you are doing everything you should be doing right, then God is going to shield you from every woe. Hallelujah. But I'm saying that may be the reason why you would have to go through hardship. Hallelujah. Are we together? Now, if you understand this, it is not everything. You will start seeing things differently. You will start seeing situations and even people differently. Because certain things that are coming to you will rather be seen as a test that is necessary for promotion. Hey, you didn't get that. Are we together? Some things that you are currently in that is looking like um, a battle, contention, a difficult moment, and you are saying, Father, show up. In fact, your friends can be saying, just like the friends of Job, that it is because you have committed a sin. It is because you missed this principle in the kingdom. Oh, it is because you didn't do this thing and you didn't do that thing. It is because you didn't rise up to pray at night. You have not been fasting and praying. That's why this is happening to you. But the Bible says, they that do know their God shall what? Shall be strong and they will do exploits. It takes a spiritual man to now stand and say, this is not because you are not doing what is right. This is just a test. And a test and a trial of your faith. Are we together? Are we together? Yes, now when you know this, you see, you almost find out that in situations like this, God is always quiet. Have you ever been in a situation whereby you prayed and it's like God is saying nothing? Have you been there? Let me see your hands up. You've been there and you are saying, Father, at least just speak a word. Just send me one word. Even if it's a prophecy. As I'm talking to this person, let the person just say something. In fact, you can come to church in such cases and your word, it's like everything is just dry. Like the heavens are just closed. God is saying nothing. You go to pray, you fast, everything is just dry. In fact, God will start giving you words for something else. Are we together? He will start talking to you about your friend that is already doing good. Now go and prophesy to that person and tell the person that I am blessing him more. <laughs> and you are saying, ah, God, me, I even want half of what the person has. In such situations, even people will not, people that will naturally just want to favor you and do you good, will just feel like not doing you good. Things will just close up. Someone can tell you that, see, the money that you need, oh, I have it. But I don't just feel like giving you. <laughs> you know, Apostle, I shared a story about someone like that. A mentor of his, that the person said, I know you need this money. Hey, <laughs> I have it. <laughs> but I don't just feel like giving you. At least don't tell me that you have it. <laughs> but God is using that to make a man. Are we together? So it's all still in the making process of God. And that's why you must be spiritual. We must be discerning. You must know when God is doing a thing. Many of us catch up with the workings of God after he's done. You will just find out that, oh, that was God. My God. Have you been there before? Yes, now talk to me now. You just find out that this thing that happened was actually God trying to teach me something, but I missed it. Just like Jacob, the Lord was here and I knew it not. It is possible that God is moving. The Bible says they walked, they had bond. 
their heart was burning, but they still did not know that it was God, Jesus Christ, that was speaking to them. Hallelujah. So when we are faced with trials, we must understand that it is possible that God sends us there. Because before every promotion, there's always a test, right? Yes, and when you are writing a test or an exam, the exam Will test you. It might be somebody you don't like. <laughs> and most times, it is those people we don't like that God uses to forge our character. The boss you don't like. The friend that is choleric, that will always speak, and God is saying, learn how to tolerate. The person that will just speak harshly, and you want to just respond, and God is saying, no, I'm teaching you something here. You say, hey, God, I just want this kind of leader. A leader that would understand me. A leader that would just take things lightly. That would tell me stories. That would pet me. But the leader that God has given you <laughs> is the one that will not look at your face. Because God knows where you are going to. And he knows you must pass what? That test. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Say, I must pass that test. I must pass that test. Say it one more time. I must pass that test. I must pass that test. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the Bible says that Jesus was led into the world. The devil was ready to give the test. Ah. God must have told him, just like Job, that see, I want you to test my son. Ah, that guy would have said yes. <laughs> now is the time. God, God so trusts Jesus so, that the salvation of mankind will be hanging in the balance. And God is telling the one that is to get, if Jesus had failed, the devil will still have dominion. Are you away? And God is saying that, God is really just. You go and do the test. Do whatever you want to do. If he fails, you have the dominion. My God. And if he succeeds, you have no right to say you did not test him. Are we together? God was so secure, trusting Jesus Christ. Can God really trust us like that? Can he trust you? Ordinary rice and beans. Fast. And your neighbor start frying. <laughs> frying plantain. <laughs> That's the moment you start looking for the scripture that says, is it, are we supposed to fast the six o'clock? <laughs> I say, is fasting or fasting? <laughs> Somebody will say, ah, Jesus already fasted already. He already paid the price. There is, you see, new creation religions will now start. There is no greater price than what he has paid. <laughs> the lie. <laughs> that person is running for something. Hallelujah. But the Bible says, Jesus Christ was ready. Jesus prepared. Now a message, he said, Jesus prepared for the test by fasting 40 days and what? 40 nights. I love the way the message puts it. It says that left him, of course, in a state of extreme hunger. Of course, you'll be hungry. Have you fasted before and you are hungry? Have you been there? Maybe fast for like three days or four days 
and they say it's time to break. <laughs> there was time I went to fast like that, and it was time to break. I went to the <laughs> because we were supposed to fast Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, eat nothing. Then on Wednesday evening you break, continue the fast Thursday, Friday. Then Friday you break. My God. So the thing was, I knew I was going to fast. So it was supposed to start on Monday. So on Sunday, like every one of us would do, I loaded my stomach with solid dough. It was not rice and beans. So I, you know, you put still, you know, put water in the bar. <laughs> so you solidify it, take it till eleven fifty-nine. <laughs> I'm not the only one, right? And so I did that. Lo and behold, the next morning I started purging, and my stomach was empty. So that was God's way of telling me that <laughs> you, will, you will do this thing on empty stomach. So I went there. So, and it was. with everything and so on wednesday i didn't know when i went there i said give me rice give me beans give me moi moi give me plantain give me spaghetti and give me chivita <laughs> so i sat down then the person that sat before me said sorry what's the difference between beans and moi moi <laughs> i looked at it i looked at him i looked at it i looked at him i said bros just forget that thing. <laughs> hallelujah so when you fast like that there is no way you will not be hungry. That brings me to this. The devil will always tempt you with that which you are desiring for. Hallelujah. It is what you love the devil will use to tempt you. You know, I somehow feel that Jesus, when he was on earth, even now, his best food is bread. Hallelujah. I, I, I feel that way. You don't agree with me? <laughs> that man loves bread. <laughs> because the devil could have said, turn the stones to fish. <laughs> or turn them to something else. But he chose bread because he knew that this man likes bread. Look at the miracles he did. He fed 5,000 people with bread. And the bread was going to waste. He said, no. <laughs> That man likes bread, oh. You know, he's a man now, right? He's dead in heaven. He said, no, don't waste that bread, oh. <laughs> he said, oh, God, carry the bread. <laughs> I am the bread of life. He likes bread. <laughs> Hallelujah. Th that's for me. I believe he likes bread. You know, when Jesus Christ rose, he could not wait to eat bread again. Are you aware? While they were fishing, he was already at the shore carrying bread and fish. Tells you that food is not bad. Though. So eat. Tell your neighbor, eat. If Jesus can eat, why won't I eat? <laughs> Who am I, right? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you aware that when we get to heaven, we are going to eat? You are aware? <laughs> actually we are going to eat and, and I think I've, I've asked Apostle this and he affirmed it so I can share it Hallelujah! because sometimes you have some revelations and to validate it you need to either hear it from your captain or you ask them and they affirm it you know when Jesus Christ rose he didn't rise from the dead with this body, right? Are you aware? It rose with what? Um, what's it called now? The celestial body, right? That's the body that, has, that is not powered by blood. Hallelujah. And that's the body that when we are taken up, we are going to be changed. Are we together? That eternal body. Now, Jesus Christ rose when he was 
by the shore eating. In fact, he still broke bread with them. So he tells you that the body in heaven is a body that can eat. Manna, angel's food. That's angel's food. But the Bible says Jesus, God even rained quails, meat, fishes down to them. It means th- those things are there. Come on, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. So if you are here and you are a foodie, that should, you know, console you that don't finish all the food on earth. Tell your neighbor, don't finish all the food on earth. There's still food in heaven. Hallelujah. Now let's get back. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So whatever you are tempted of is because you actually love that thing. You actually love. So the devil looks around and searches for your interest. It doesn't take him time. He knows what he can do now to tempt you. There are certain foods that you cannot be tempted with. Right? I know one for apostle. You cannot give him onions and say you want to tempt a person with onions, right? Just the way what you don't like, the devil cannot say he's tempting you with this. You are only tempted with that that you love. Praise the Lord. And you are tempted when you are desperate. And whatever you are going to be tempted with is actually proof that you have that thing. Hey, are you getting what I'm saying? When the devil comes to say, if you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. Remember, he's talking to the bread of life. The one that has what it takes to actually multiply bread. So the moment we fall for the temptation of the devil, we have lost more than what we think we have lost. I'm saying whatever the devil is currently tempting you with now, that is like a struggle. You actually have that thing. Hey, are you in a good one? Saying? You may not see it now, but it is factored in your destiny. Yes, and you will have it in surplus. But the devil will come ahead and say, sell these things. Let go of it so I can have it. I will steal it from you now. That's the same thing that happened to Esau. He sold the birthright. Because of porridge. And even though he didn't get the blessing, he still had food in surplus. What would he have taken him to just endure? See, the devil is tempting you now with sexual sins. He's tempting you now with money. I'm telling you that that thing, you actually have it. And in abundance. Hey, I said you have it. In abundance. Tell your neighbor, don't sell off. Say, I will not sell off. I will not sell off. So Jesus Christ responded. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Media, can we have it on the screen now? Matthew 4 and verse 4. So that I just go with that. Now Jesus answered by quoting the Tyronomy. It says, it takes more than bread to... St-. Can we read it together? I want to go. By quoting. It takes more than bread to stay one more time it takes more than bread to for the last time now let's go to the next thing it takes what oh my god one more time it takes a steady stream of words from god's mouth tell your neighbor it takes more than bread to stay alive shout it to the person it takes more than bread to stay alive Hallelujah. The you know, apostle has taught us about what bread is. Bread is that which you can get now. That which satisfies you in the present. You know, that gratifies your cravings in the now. That's bread. That which you can just quickly 
manipulate and get now. That which you have to just cut corners and you've gotten already. You don't have to wait for bread. But you see, when you wait for that which you are not just to live by, that's the word of God. That word can actually produce bread. Are you getting what I'm saying? It says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes or proceeds out of the mouth of God. That word is the word that creates. So when you get that word, it has what it takes to produce the bread. Hey, are we together? So every time you are faced, you are in between, in between two things. Oh, should I do this? I know if I get this done, I'm going to honor God. But if I do this, I'm going to gratify my flesh. I'm telling you that the moment you sell off, you have actually lost what could have even given you what you should have gotten. And it will be lasting. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hey, are we together? So the Bible says man shall not live. You know, man is, it means you, sh you should, physically speaking now, there are two, you know, a man is not just a physical being, please come. A man is also a spiritual being, right? So this man is, has a physical body. But the real man is who? Talk to me. The real man is who? Now let me give an example. Do you know that if he changes, he does surgery, changes his face, his looks, his body and everything. The moment he talks to you, you can see, say, ah, I've heard this voice somewhere. Right? He tells you that this is actually not the real man. What you are seeing. Are we together? The real man is the man on the inside. Why? Because the Bible says God made man in his image and in his likeness he created them. And when he was done, he formed, you see, he formed the man from the sun of the dust. That's what we can see, the earthly, um, the physical structure, right? Then when he was done, he breathed into the man the breath of life that made man a living soul. That gave man and made man primarily a spirit that has a soul and lives in a body. So this is just the case. Now God is saying, man shall not live by bread only. Why? Because if you don't even live by bread at all, this physical body is going to wear, right? You don't eat at all. Will you not die? Yes. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, because that is what now feeds, feeds the real man which is the spirit man. Are we together? So what people do, thank you, is that they actually just feed one part of their makeup. So the Bible says a steady stream, a steady flow of God's word. It means as you are feeding daily in the flesh, you must also be feeding daily in the spirit. There must not be a day that you have not heard from God. Are we together? You must be conscious of your spirit man as much as you are conscious of your physical man. Many of us take care of our physical bodies. You know, you do all kinds of things. You buy makeup, hair product, all of those things. But the spirit man is crying. That guy is lean. If they were to show us a picture of our spirit man, some of you would deny it. But that's the actual person who Hey, that's what. <laughs> some, some need revival. Another day, revival meetings. Some need, because that man is starving. The man is starving. And that's why they would keep chasing you in the dream. They will pursue you, beat you, plank your head, feed you. Because that man that is supposed to be, the Bible says the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmities. Are we together? So you must feed your spirit man. You must feed flesh. He's pumped up, he's going to the gym, 
is doing all kinds of things, but the spirit man is dying daily. That guy is weak. That guy is starving. That guy knows nothing about the word. In fact, when he wants to quote, it is written. <laughs> he will misquote it. You know, Pastor Mimi was talking about on Sunday how that people make certain things and say the Bible says what? Everyone help those who help themselves. That's the way his own spirit man is. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you must feed your spirit man. So when the Bible is saying man shall not live by bread alone, he's telling you that there is something much more than the physical. How do you say that? There is something much more than what? You know, you know how much a believer is by their attitude to the word. You know how well a believer has fed his spirit man by how much he is yearning for God's word. There are people that have not even heard God's word once in their life. You don't have an archive of God said this to me. You can't be in trouble now and you want to run to your secret place and you are coming back with a more sure word of prophecy saying God has said it, it is settled. The spirit man is just, you know, away from reality. He does not even understand what is going on there. He's just moving in the world and this world is spiritual. Are we together? Oh, that the Lord will revive us tonight. I didn't hear that amen loud and clear. Amen. So there are people that will just focus and all that they are doing is feeding the flesh. The words they are hearing, the songs they are hearing. These are the days where people no longer even do devotions. You just go excerpt, excerpt. You know, I still had one recently during IMC. But he said, just do excerpt, excerpt, excerpt. <laughs> I said, just you going to find your own way. Oh God, there's no other way. Are we together? You must, you must have it is written. You must have it. Imagine Jesus Christ had gone through that thing and the test came. And he started saying, it is written, heaven help those who help themselves. <laughs> Which one again? Huh? We said it on Sunday now. The patient dog eat the fattest bone. And said, I will be patient. I will not turn this stone to bread. I will not turn this stone to bread. But the moment the devil heard it is written, the word of God is powerful. Have you ever felt a surge in your spirit because you heard God's word? Hey, Kadaba Kashtagaba. An audacity came on you because. It was a reminder of God's word. You probably be doing something, you are in the midst of a tribulation, and God's word just came. Ah, you will just become another man. Are we together? You are praying, your tongues will change at that moment. Right? It will become capital letters. And the person beside you will say, Ah, what happened? But hey, I found something. In fact, you should not leave the place of prayer until that happens. The moment you get to that place, the word of God comes. What follows is joy. You burst out with joy, knowing I have, I have touched something substantial. I can take it to the bank. It is more real than any other thing you will tell me. Are we together? Praise the Lord. So those that will just value things on the physical are those that, you see, when the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It is talking about you valuing things that are not seen, but are eternal. Than things that you can see and are temporal. Now you are in church, right? Are we together? What the Bible is saying is, can you forego coming to get the word of God for earthly gains? Now you are here. Because of the word. If someone texts you now and say, if you get to so so and so place now, I will give you a thousand dollars. What would you do? (laughs) 
What would you do? You what? <laughs> it, it shows how much you value the word. Hey, is somebody getting what I'm saying? Now, I just talked about man not living by bread alone. I'm trying to just bring this, you know, break it down. All I'm doing is just to re-explain all that apostle has taught. Are you with me? But I'm trying to bring it down. Now, if you actually think that the word, or you're in a place of prayer and God is talking to you, giving you and showing you pictures, is giving you a word, and somebody calls you and says, come, I want to give you something that you can actually see. Two kinds of man, men will re- respond differently. One that knows that the word God is giving me here will actually produce even much more than the person wants to give me. We will stay there. We will honor God. Because it is God that moves the heart of kings, right? So if God has moved your heart and you want to be God, he can use another person. But the one that only thinks about now we will actually sell that birthright. We will just move. And some of us, it's not even money. The moment PHCM brings light, <laughs> and you are praying, you just say, shalagaba, shalagaba. you want to go and plug your laptop. <laughs> oh, let me quickly go and get this done. <laughs> Many of us used to blame Esau. <laughs> But when we get to heaven, he saw who beat people. <laughs> I say, you, you were preaching and shouting that I sold my bed right. <laughs> you, you said your generation. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, I value the world. Say it again. Shout loud and clear. I value the world. <laughs> say it again. I value the world. The word of God in your spirit is an asset. You must value things that you cannot see. You see, the things that people give you, that you can see, they can collect. God, Jesus was telling um, Martha that see, Mary has chosen a good part. She was at the feet of Jesus, listening to the word. He said, that which she's getting, it cannot be taken from her. Hey, are we together? If I give you something, we can have... You know, a dispute. And I say, give me back my stuff. But if you have gotten something that eyes cannot see, no man can take it back from you. You must value that thing. That is what makes men. So many times I'm sitting, an apostle is teaching, what I want is that which no man can take. That when I catch it, I know I have caught it. And there is no devil. Hey! There is nobody. I know I have caught this one. Wake me up. I am sleeping. I have caught this aspect. Hallelujah. Say, I value the word. Say, I value the word. When you value the word, you see, the word has what it takes to bring to you all that you would ever need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, I value the word one more time. Shout it loud and clear. I value the word. word. Now, let me me take us through another aspect. For you to say you value the word, first, you must must understand the power of that word that you say you value. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, let's go there, Hebrews chapter 1. From verse 1. Media. Hebrews chapter 1 and from verse 1. No, Hebrews 11, sorry. Hebrews 11 from verse 1. It says, now, let's be together, I want to go. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, go back there. Let's, Let's start from there. It says, faith is what? The substance of things all for. It means faith is substantial. Are we together? You cannot say you have faith and not know it. Mm. I'm still going somewhere tonight. All right? 
where you will know when you are fit. Faith is not gra gra. It is not stubborn head. There are practical ways that you can know when the Bible says faith comes by hearing, right? It means I like the scriptures. It, it makes you secure. I love the scripture that Apostle loves to read, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. It means there was a time that Jesus was not anointed. Are we together? He was not born anointed. But the Bible now shows us how that God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power. Who we went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So there was a time in his life where he was not anointed. So the Bible also says that faith comes by hearing. So faith can come. You're not getting what I'm saying. Let's go back to Hebrews 11. We're still going to get there. Now it says, now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So there are things that you don't see, but you have the substance for it. Are we together? I cannot see the money, but I have it. I cannot see the car, but I have it. I cannot see the spouse yet, but what? I have it. Now many of you are quiet. I cannot see the baby, but what? I have it. I cannot see my business striving yet, but what? I have it. I have it. Oh, I cannot see me walking in health yet, but what? I have it. I have it. Faith is substantial. It is the evidence. So when they say, you're now saying, ah, this is going to happen. And someone is asking you that, okay, how do you know? There is an evidence. But don't forget that the carnal man may not understand that evidence. Because what? They are what? Spiritually designed. Are we together? Have I lost at any point? Are we together? All right. Verse 2. It says, For by it the elders obtained a good report. Verse 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed, the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made from what? Things which do appear. That is, everything you are seeing in the world today was formed by something called what? Talk to me. The word of God. That God is saying you shall not, you should live by. Mm. Are we together? So God is saying, trust and live by that which I made the heavens and the earth. Live by this. You will have a more guaranteed life when you do this. Because the sun is not saying that one day I want to set in the east. Mm. So as far as everything is in their place, you know if God's word should fail for one day, we are in trouble. <laughs> are you aware? The moon will just fall. Or rain just start falling and not stop. Or the sun should just come down small. <laughs> Doesn't mean that everybody is actually black. <laughs> there's no white man anyway. <laughs> the white man that is shouting that there is no God, there is no God among it. <laughs> so God is saying, the moment my word, I created the heavens, the earth, the constellations, everything you are seeing, by this word, now I speak that word to your spirit. You should trust it. Hey, has God said anything to anybody here? You should not doubt him. God has given you his word. That word can buy and produce anything. So what you should go for is the word. Somebody say the word. I'm trying to bring us back to the place of placing value on the word. Can you be in the midst of trouble 
and all you are going after is God. What exactly is your word saying? What are you saying? What are you saying to me? Oh, my business is running out, down. Things are not going the way they should. But I need that word. That word. And when the word comes, it's not as if you are having the word and you are scared. One side, you are saying, ah, God's word has said this, so, but let me try it like this. That you know that these words have not failed. And they will not fail. It will start from you. No, that's the truth. It won't start from you. That's how powerful this word is. So what God wants to do is to be able to speak to you. But you see, there's another problem. There are people that cannot even hear. Even if God shouts, they will not hear what he's saying. God speaks, tell them things, but they will not hear. Now let me show you a scripture. Mande kapo kushtagaba. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. He's able. God is able to do just what he says. He's going to fulfill every way promised. Come on, lift it up. Cause you are. Hallelujah. Shout, God is able. Shout it again, God is able. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. Second Corinthians 4 and verse 13. Now it says, We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written. We have believed and therefore we what? Now before we even get here, I think I've mixed it. Now 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 10 to 11. 2 Corinthians 2. Now I want us to read this together. I want to go. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything, to whom I forgive it for your sakes. Forgive I it in the person of Christ. Now verse 11. I want us to read loud and clear. Oh. Ignorant of the... Now verse 12. Next verse. Hallelujah. Um, I think I've missed. Can we just pray in the Holy Ghost? Can the Kabu Kosh Tokaba? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Sorry, First Corinthians two. Hallelujah. Now I want us to read it together. First Corinthians two from verse ten. First Corinthians two from verse ten. Are we there? All right, let's go. One to go. But God had revealed them unto us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things. Let's go from verse 9. Verse 9 describes it already. All right, we read the scripture often, but let's start from here. I want to go. But as it is written, I have not seen, not yet heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. These things are not physical things, right? The Bible is saying, I has not what? Neither has yet what? And no heart has actually comprehended can comprehend that which he has prepared 
for the, them that love him. Now verse 10. It says, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Now verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given unto us. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now you see, the Bible says in um, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 24, that what? God is, John 4, 24, that God is what? Spirit. And they that worship him, must worship him in what? You are a child of God. Do you think God wants to speak to you? No, talk to me. Do you think God wants to speak to you? How many of you have heard God's voice before? How many of you have not heard God's voice before? You have not heard God's voice before? Some of us, put your hands down. Hallelujah. God wants to speak to you. Say, God wants to speak to me. Because you will never be able to live by faith without being able to hear the word of God. All you will do is live by bread, by your physical senses. The things people have said, the things you read online. But you see, one of the greatest assets, assets you will ever have is having access to the voice of God. That's the voice that can tell you to do things that doesn't make sense. Are we together? Are we together? Now the Bible says God is spirit. What language does he speak? Talk to me. Hey, are we together? Look at me. Look up. Hey, man, I want to show you something. And this, I believe, is going to deliver somebody. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 14. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 14. Now let's read together one to go. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Why? Neither can he know them because they are spiritually. Let's read it again one more time. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Because they are spiritually the same. It tells you that the only man that can actually function in the realm where man does not live by bread alone is a spiritual man. Not the man that calculates with his senses. If Jesus was to be calculating with his senses, he would have actually turned stones to bread. Right? So you have to be spiritual. To know what God is saying. Are we together? Now, you see, when you remain, remain in the spirit, state of being natural, God will not stop speaking. He will be speaking, but you won't be able to hear him. Let me give an example. Who has maybe a Nokia phone here or a small phone? Any small? Anybody? Okay, please, thank you. Can we celebrate that? Now, this phone, how many of you know this phone? You know this phone, right? We all probably use this phone. Now, this phone has a function. The best you can do it with it is SMS and MMS. Oh, oh can you do MMS? Huh? Okay, maybe not. Now, imagine, you know there are ways you can send some pictures via text right and some phones will process it now bring your phone please now if i use this phone to send a picture message to this phone will there be a notification that you receive something talk to me you will see it but will you understand what will you see there juggler, 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 juggler. right <laughs> question mark even the phone is asking question what is this what is this <laughs> but if i bring another phone this phone 
and I send from this to this, what will happen? Huh? You will see exactly what I sent. That's how it is for a natural man. The things of the spirit will always be foolishness. He will never be able to comprehend it because he has not risen to the class of God. Yes, he has what it takes to receive it because he has the spirit man. Hey, there will be notifications. Sometimes we are there. You know there is trouble. There is highlight in your spirit, but you don't just understand. You will hear the sound of the trumpet, but you will not know when to prepare for battle. You will not be able to discern what that sound is. So you will hear the sound for war and you will go and party. God is saying rise and pray because something is about to change but you will feel it is the peace to sleep. The Bible says the natural man cannot, there's no way, there's no way he can receive from the spirit of God. It means you have to rise and be spiritual. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. Right? Are we together? So faith is not gra gra. You don't just assume faith and say I have faith for health. I have faith for long life. No. The Bible humbles us that you can actually be and the truth is that you may not have faith for finance yet. But the Bible is saying that you can actually sit down with the word. And it's only a matter of time. That faith will what? Come. It will only come by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So you must hear. Yeah, I must hear. You must be able to hear God's word. In the midst of trouble, you must still be able to hear God's word. In the midst of tribulation. In the midst of trials. You must still be able to discern and hear the word of God. Are we together? Are we together? So faith comes by what? By the hearing. And hearing by the word of God. When you hear God's word, you know it. Oh yes. You know you have heard. That which he has said to you, you can take it to the bank. So are there areas in your life where you are just playing gamble? There are people that actually want to live by the word, but they don't have the capacity to because they've not risen to the point where they can be spiritual hey we're going to pray tonight are we together are you ready to pray tonight hey i can't get that amen if you're ready to pray shout amen, amen. we're going to pray tonight and the prayer is going to do something in your spirit man an awakening an awakening an awakening an awakening an awakening So in the school of faith, in the school of, you know, living beyond bread is the place where you can actually hear the things that men cannot see. Can I give us one minute? Rise on your feet and pray. Hey, pray, pray. Mande kabokosh dagaba. Mande bronde kabokosh dagaba. How can you walk? When you don't know the way of the wind, how can you run? When you don't know the way, pray, lift your voice and pray. And how can you fly when you don't know the ways of the wind? The power of walking is bringing everything in obedience to Christ. Oh yes, pray. How can you walk when you don't know the ways of the wind? How can you run when you don't know the ways of the Spirit? How can you fly when you don't know the ways of the wind? It's the power at walk in you. Bringing everything in obedience to Christ. So swallow your pride 
tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands is the keys to eternal life it's a little here and a little there until the day will done is that work in you bringing everything Kabanda Kavash Tagada. Oh, yes, pray for one more minute. Mande Kabo Kosh Tagaparada Pasta. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. You're not praying as you should. Have your seat for a moment. You're still going to rise to pray. Now, you see, the word of God is yes and amen. And I said from the start, this is to bring us to the point where you place value for the word. You can sell anything to get the word. The Bible says buy the truth and sell it not. Are we together? You must be able to give everything for the word. A man that loses all but still has the world will get everything he has lost back. Get the word. In your spirit, get the word. Get the word. Get the word. There might be storms, but ensure that the word is in the boat. And there are many of us that have lost or the word of God has slept. Just like when Jesus slept in the boat. The word of God is sleeping because you have not revived it back. God has spoken again about the situation you are currently in. But you have not jacked it back and said, Lord, you once said this. Your word says this. You must learn to test the word of God and try it and prove it true. Many of us don't do that. No. God wants you to test his word. Oh. Are you aware? You know, the day I got my word for healing, and I'm going to be very sincere. I love trying the word of God. So, you know, when I started growing up in faith, I listened to God's word and for I was falling sick and the likes and when the books I was reading the scripture that will be there is what by stripes you were hid you know confess it until it becomes a reality but I was to be honest doing that and it was not really producing I get what I'm saying you will confess it how many of you have been there talk to me now talk to me yes I'll confess and I will really not see any change but a day came somebody say a day came and I read God's word. Proverbs 18 and verse 14. Proverbs 18 and verse 14. Media, can we have it? Now let's read together. I want to go. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. Now let's have this in Amplified. Then message. Now, want to go. The strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble but the weak and broken spirit who can raise up or bear now let's have it in now let's read together i want to go a healthy spirit conquers adversity but what can you do when the spirit so god's word came to me and i saw it for the first time because it is not what you hear that changes you it is what you see are you aware yes, hey you must actually see it and i saw for the first time that my infirmities, my spirit man was actually designed to be it if it is LD. Hey, you didn't get that. <sighs> that a healthy spirit can actually bear a man's infirmity. The Bible says, if the same spirit that quickened Jesus from the grave dwells in us, it shall also quicken our mortal bodies. So there is a connection with the spirit and the body. Hey, are you not getting what I'm saying? There is a way the health rate or the health status of your spirit affects your body. There is a connection. You're not getting what I'm saying. The Bible says a elder spirit actually bears a man's infirmities. So when sickness is coming, it checks the state of your spirit. And if the spirit is broken or weak, sickness will actually have permission to the body. 
but the spirit can be healthy. Hey, are you getting what I'm saying? You get that right? Now let's look at Proverbs 17 verse 22. Now when I connected these two things, and this is a series we have done, it says, a cheerful disposition is what? Good for your... Talk to me now. Now let's have this in King James, then amplified. <clears throat> Want to go? A merry heart doeth good like what? A medicine, but a broken spirit dried the bones. Amplified. A happy heart is good and a cheerful mind works, but a broken spirit dries up. So the Bible is saying, what you will go and get in a pharmacy? A merry heart is as good as it. And there is no degree of sickness. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, it takes a point or a level of praying to get to the point where the heart is merry, where the spirit is joyful. Have you ever prayed that you get to a point, you climax in prayer, and you just begin to rejoice? And that place is like you are mad. Everybody is wondering what's, but the gear has changed. Something has shifted. Then I noticed, I said, yes. The moment I can have this often in my life, there is no infirmity that can take place. And that became my word for healing. I should get what I'm saying. Now that's faith. That's faith. The easiest way was to just, just go and buy the medicine in the pharmacy. But when you are living by the word, is that you are living by what people cannot see. Do you just understand what you're saying now? Duplicate this to every area of your life. It works for you. Faith comes by hearing. The moment you can now see the word, it's not just a word that is taught. Do you understand what I'm saying? The moment that thing sinks in, hey! And I started thinking that the times I felt sick were the times where I was maybe sad or depressed. If you are here, yeah, you're always depressed. You will be falling sick anyhow. True or not true? Yes. There was a time like that, that I, I, you know, there are certain courses that you do and everybody just expects to get an A. You know those kind of courses? And you now come out, somebody said that the answer is 51. And you say, ah, me, I got 502. Somebody said, no, my own is 52. The own is looking close, but your own is far. <laughs> that kind of thing, you just keep quiet. <laughs> I'm shaking your head. Oh. Somebody else is coming and saying, I got 35. I think that one is even close. But your own is far. And I said, my God, I became depressed and I fell sick. And God reminded me, a merry heart, do it good like medicine. The moment you begin to charge your spirit, man, it will withstand infirmities. Infirmities. You will just all of a sudden begin to see that there is strength translating from your spirit to your body. I remember how that many years ago I used to have an experience of eating in the dream. In fact, I thought my own was bad until I had one of my friends own and I was staying with that person some days. They used to serve him on the roof. <laughs> on the roof. And he was telling me that, ah, <laughs> he used to enjoy it. They would bring akara and pap, yam and pamoy. Ah, I said, guy, <laughs> your own is good. <laughs> And you see, God gave me a word. Now let me say this for someone's deliverance here. Because this is how God's word comes to set us free. The Bible says, and ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall not set you free. The truth shall make. Because if you are set free, it's like you escaped. They can still catch you. But once you are made free, it means the yoke, your, your neck is now fattened. There is no way for that yoke to size it again. You are made free. When you know the truth, but well, other means can set you free. But when the word comes, somebody say when the word comes, it makes you free. Now Matthew 15 and verse 11. And Jesus was talking to his disciples. We're going to read this also in Amplified, but King James first. That I was praying and I read the scripture. And the Bible says, not that which goeth into the mouth defiles a man. 
but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Are you seeing that now? Now, Amplify it says, It is not what goes into the mouth of a man that makes him what? Unclean and defiled. But what comes out of the man makes a man unclean and defiles the man. Now, let's have it in message. It is not, let's read once go. That pollutes your life, but what you vomit of. And I said to myself, now if you go back, let's go down. Let's go down. Read that scripture. Later, his disciples came and told him, said, did you know how upset the Pharisees were when they heard what you said? Verse 13. But he answered and said, every plant. Now verse 14. He explained. Verse 15. Now, then answered Peter and said unto him, declare unto us this parable. Verse 16. And Jesus said, are ye also without what? Understanding. Don't do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth the inner the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast what into the drought. When I saw this, I knew that there is nothing that goes into the mouth that defiles a man. It is what you say afterwards. And the moment that reality dawned on me, the devil himself stopped serving me food. Because you see, the word is spiritual everything knows when you receive that word so the question is man shall not live by bread alone but by every word the streams the flow of word that comes from the mouth of god that must be your desire for every area of your life that when you are in a fix and god speaks you know the lady was sharing a testimony on sunday of how that you know she called for prayers I was very tired and frustrated that day. But the moment I heard the phone call and we spoke, the Lord said to me, that is not a result. So it is not a function of how you are feeling emotionally. Are you getting what I'm saying? It is the state of your spirit man. You may not be looking happy. But God can give you a word. And that's why, you see, the things of the spirit, you don't react based on feelings. Joy is not based on feelings. When God is saying rejoice, <laughs> you rejoice, you make it. Are we together? You barite, you create that joy. The just shall live by faith, not by feelings. Are we together? So you must have access to that voice. Now let me read one scripture and we will pray. And we will pray. Jude 1 and verse 20. We have not much time. I would have loved to show us some other things. Now, it says, But ye beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in what? Talk to me now. Now, when the Bible says praying in the Holy Ghost, it says build up yourself on your most holy faith. Because, you see, you have to rise. The Amplified says, rise like an edifice. So there is a place where you ought to see. It's like you trying to climb. Are we together? You are trying to climb to a point in the spirit where you can now see beyond and understand what God is saying. Are we together? What God is saying is, by praying in the Holy Ghost, you are upgrading. You are upgrading. I showed you that phone, the Nokia phone. God has sent the word, but he's shouting, upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. Upgrade the device so you can hear. God wants to speak. He wants to save you. But you need the word. You need to, the word. You must desire the word. You must not be without the word. Every day, he loads you with benefits. Give us this day our daily bread. It's the word. You must not step out of your house without the word. There must be a word in your spirit. A word knowing that I cannot die. Hey. Are we together? A word knowing that, you know, arrows shall fly, pestilence, but it is not my portion. I am going out and I am what? Coming in. It must be a word for every area of your life. I want us to rise on our feet this morning, um, this evening. Now, you're going to pray as one that wants to rise as an edifice are you ready to rise hey are you ready to rise and see now lift your voice and pray pray upgrade your spirit man 
Mande kabande kabaradas. Lende ke bronde kabasta. Rande kabo sidagaba. Hey, come on, pray, pray, pray. Now lift your voice and pray, pray. Kadam Batista, Rande ke boko shtagaba, Rede ke bonde ke bastagaba. Hey, something is rising here tonight. Something is rising here tonight. Hey, Rabande ke bo shadabaya. Hey, ha ha ha. I sense something rising here tonight. Kadeke bonde ke basta. Pray your spirit out. Hey, a word is going to drop, and it ends confusion. Kadaba sadaba, hande kabasta gaba, rede kebo sadagaba, elende kebo sadagaba, yende kebo sadagaba, ronde kebo sadagaba. Oh yes, bronde kebo teste ke bronde kaba, lande kete bo sadagaba, rande kebo, rende kebo. Pray, pray. How can you walk? When you don't know the ways of the wind, how can you run? When you don't know the ways of the spirit, let the drummer go. How can you fly when you don't know the ways of the spirit? The power at work in you, bringing everything in obedience to Christ. Kanda kabara da basta. He's the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the Living God. He's the Holy Ghost, the Scepter of the King of Kings. Kabande kabasta. He's the kadara da basta daya. The Seal of the Age to Come. He's bringing everything. Hallelujah. Now, I want to show you a scripture. Romans 14 and verse 18. Romans 14. Let's start from verse 17. 17. Now, the Bible says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink it has nothing to do with bread are we together it has nothing to do with fish it has nothing to do with things you can see and eat but what righteousness somebody say righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost one more time righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost one more time righteousness peace and joy in the Holy. now when god functions he's not going to give you signs on the things that you can see they're not ephemeral things they're not earthly things that you can see or touch or undo but in your spirit sometimes you are praying and you just sense a peace that passes all understanding that's god but the kind of man will not understand I want us to pray one more time. Now pray very well. Pray very well. That Father, my spirit catches your word. I leave the realm of being canal to the realm of being designing. Lande kabo kasta gabaya. Hey, kabrande kabasta. Many of you, you hear the word of God. You will hear tonight. You will hear tonight. For some of us, it will be a reviving of that which you have heard. That the Lord is saying, go back. Go back. The things I have said is what I am still saying. I am not saying anything new. Rande kete poro de bosa. Rande kete 
The word I promised you is still the same word I am saying. Lande Kabosa, Rande Ketesi, Ropa da Kabas, Mambronde Ketebosa, Rande Ketebrande Kaba, Yetebra Sapakaba. Hey, Mande Kaba, pray, pray. There are many of us that your interest has left the word of God. You did not start this way, but the value for the word of God is coming again. You will not sell off like Esau. You will value the word of God, and it will produce in your spirit. Pray, pray for the next few minutes. Pray, intensify. Let them get the protest Run them get the bush. Let them get the brother kaba. Yet the kaba that you will come in the volume of the books as it is written of you to do His will. You will not just be a hearer. You will comprehend and understand what God is saying. Rende kete bossa, rende kete sa. Hey, ha 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 ha. Hey, harosa, mande ke bronde ke ba, mande ke bronde ke ba. Many of you will have eyes to see, visions, visions. You will see clearly. You will know what the Lord is saying. Kabarada bossa. Woo, ha 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 ha. Hey. For the spirit and the bride says, "Come." I am not destitute of the word of God. I know what the word is saying. Lande kaba, yende ke bronde kaba, yende ke bosa, lende kabora kaba, rende ke bosa, ra sosa, e bronde bosa, yende ke bosa, e ha 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 ha, wa kabora kaba, kandele bosa, pray pray until there is joy in your spirit. Pray, ask till your joy is full. Ask till your joy is full. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are still praying. Now the Bible says the kingdom of God is righteousness. Righteousness. You know, Apostle was teaching in Potakot this morning, and he said that righteousness is not just only having the right standing with God. There is the gift of righteousness, and it's the righteousness that you enter into based on the things you are doing in accordance to God's word. Are we together? There is a righteousness that you know God's word, the truth, and you stand there. It makes you righteous. That's what he's saying. That when you get what the word of God is saying, you can say it is written. And that's God's word. Your faith can be stirred up. God can also give you an inkling of peace. You have peace in your spirit. You know the kingdom has come. Then There's another one called the joy in the Holy Ghost. That you pray. You know you have received answer when your joy is what full the bible says ask it means pray until your joy is full i want us to pray some more many of you will burst out with joy joy like never before that joy that takes sickness away that's the joy that brings the answer now lift your voice and pray don't just pray casually pray 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 until your joy is full Pray, pray, pray. Intensify the prayers. Let them keba until your joy is full. Don't stop. Hey, pray, pray. Don't look at the person beside you. Pray, pray, pray. Pray out your heart. Kadaba, face the matter. And tonight, you settle it once and for all with destiny. Enough of fearfulness. Rise to the place of faith. I march. I march. 
I must. I will not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Hey, I see faith rising. Oh yes, let that get a brand Yet take a boss on a gaba. Red head get a scar. Let papa deski. Red head gaba. For some of you, you will hear again. You will hear again. There is a reviving in the spirit. For John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard. Many of you are rising to that place where you will hear again. Hey, Katakaba. Enough of doing life without God. This was the design. Man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Kadapa Sadapa. Rise. Rise like an edifice. Few more minutes. Pray. Kadapates. Libro de Kebosa. Woo! Ha 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 ha! Now the Bible says in Ephesians 3 and verse 20 it says now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or imagine or think you must see now in the stillness I want you to just be there pray under your breath until you begin to see pictures I want you to see yourself without sickness hey that's the realm I want us to get into see yourself without sickness See yourself without lack. It says, none shall lack their mates. See yourself with your spouse. Kandakaba, until joy bursts out of you. Begin to see it. Begin to see it. See it. Paint the pictures. He is able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all that you ask or imagine. Kadabaradabasa. Lande Kabasta. I see breakthroughs. I see breakthroughs. I see miracles. I see healings. Oh yes, I see revival. Enough of that affliction. Oh yes, I can see it rising on the inside of someone here. Hey, oh yes, 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 yes. There's a rising, there's an emergence. Ha 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 ha. Woo! Ha 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 ha. Hey, kabande Rande ke bonde ke bas. Rande ke debosa kaba. Rande kabosa. Ha 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 ha. 